Well, this is our special, The Billion Show. And we uh, pull in Dave Kelly, Fairway Mortgage, Tony Bachman, Keynoter, Report Card Show. Both of you guys uh, made a little TV appearance. I, I didn't notice your hair was cut any different or neither one of you wearing ties this morning, but you uh, did have ties on television. Tony, what was that about? Yeah, they, uh, they just wanted to talk a little bit about the housing market. So, you know, I think that uh, right now there's just been a lot of people who have had a lot of questions. And so I think it was a very appropriate time for them to have a segment, just like we're talking about real estate now. I mean, there's just a lot of concern, maybe a little uncertainty. But uh, I think if enough people listen to, you know, some of the things that's going on in our local market, I think that might uh, quell some of that uncertainty. When you uh, bring in the banker, Dave Kelly, uh, you always worry about people. Can they afford it? What's happening to the first-time home buyers, the seniors? They want to sell their house. They don't want to rent. What do we do? Well, there's, you know, I guess I'm trying to tell people, look at long-term at what we've got going on. To Tony's point, there seems to be a lot of uh, national media scary headline stuff going on. And, you know, Sioux Falls has always kind of been a, a buffer against that and uh, kind of been an island unto ourselves. And, you know, right now, yeah, rates have gone up. Uh, but, I, and again, you hear some of the headlines with, you know, is there a recession looming, but this is the best time to buy that you probably could have because again, some of those people get scared away, but if you stay the course and, uh, look at buying a home, there's, there's options, you know, we, we've got financing options that can help people to get into a home. We have a two for one buy down where we can lower somebody's rate by over 2% the first year. So that helps them get into a home. And then if the recession plays out and rates go down, which they should, then, again, we can refinance them to help a, a more of a long-term need. How about the marketplace? I know that uh, any time that you're on the show or you're being seen other places, people ring the phones off the wall, kind of questions are asking. Yeah, I think the, the question really is is just like yeah, the, just the uncertainty of what's going to happen, what do we see with interest rates, are we going to see prices drop? And I know that's kind of the – you know, I sound like a broken record here, but, you know, it's just kind of the, the conversation we're getting. And, you know, and I can just say right now, we don't anticipate prices dropping just because, you know, what we live in a supply and demand economy. And right now the supply is still low. I mean, we are only, I mean, as of in June, we were only about two months of inventory, 2.1 months of inventory, which is still very low. Uh, and I say, and I think with the interest rates, and David could probably talk to this, is the fact that, you know, yes, we are probably going to see interest rates tick up again. But the other thing, too, home ownership is the best hedge against inflation because now you have a guaranteed rate. You know exactly what you're going to be paying per month for the next 15 to 20 or 30 years and versus if you're renting, when your lease comes up, you don't know what your lease is going to be. It may it may go up even higher, whereas you're, when you buy a home, you're guaranteed you know exactly what you're going to be paying. Stabilization, uh, kind of a key word that I read in your notes. Stabilization. Well, you know, again, to Tony's point, houses, I think, I hate to say it, but Zillow came out last week and said that they expect prices to go up 7% on a national basis next year. And that's national. So, again, you've got to take into account the West Coast, the East Coast, Southern states that have had the, you know, the double-digit gains that kind of goes up and down a little bit more than what we see in the Midwest here. So, you know, when they say that we're going to slow down to maybe a normal market, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I look forward to it, actually, because it's kind of been crazy. It's been a little yeah. too crazy. I think we're that's what we're hoping we get to is more of a traditional market. Uh, you know, when it comes to the home appreciations, it's been appreciating so fast and so quickly that it's unsustainable. So now we're hoping that it'll just level off. But to that point, uh, we don't expect prices to drop. We actually see prices potentially increasing, you know, by, you know, pre- home uh, Values appreciating anywhere from four to seven percent, so it's still traditionally that's always been like four percent is what we've always had used as a benchmark. Getting a lot of calls from other parts of the country who are hearing about South Dakota, or have those kind of ended? Yep, still getting calls. Uh, we just had a call here on. Uh, I talked to someone. I was at an open house on Saturday. Spoke to someone that called in. They're from Washington State. They want to move to either Montana or South Dakota. We talked for why Montana? Just because they thought they, you know, they they've heard such good things about Montana and good things about South Dakota, and so we're, uh, you know, we're sending them some information. And uh, this week we're going to do a couple of video tours with them, and we'll see we'll see where it goes. Yeah, for me last week it was uh, Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas had applications from there. People wanting to move here can work remotely. 
Um, one gentleman works for the airlines, and he's just going to commute on the weekends. And so, yeah, they, they see our quality of life, and they, they want that. What it's costing people to rent right now is not a, a bargain either. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just the the whole uh, housing market as a whole. I mean, when it comes to you know people who are buying multifamily uh, co- or homes, that sort of thing, or apartments, they're having to pay more to buy them, and so they've got to pass that on to the you know the people that are renting. And so, yeah, it's right now. I mean, I think the market, it, it's just whatever people will pay and whatever people will rent them for. But you know, rents have have ticked up quite a bit, and uh, when you start looking at a rent payment versus a uh, Mortgage payment, we're back to that conversation of we should take a hard look at what it would cost to, you know, purchase home versus renting. Now, I realize that there's advantages to renting because then you can, if you need to pick up and leave or you know there's going to be a job transfer or something like that, then it makes sense. I always think renting is a good idea if you're new to a market. You know, it's, it's kind of scary to jump in and buy right away. So yeah. I don't think it's bad for somebody to come in and rent short term before they, you know, find out what part of town they want to live in, you know, what works for them, what doesn't Get a feel work. for the city. Right, you know, and so that's not a bad thing. But you're right; we've we've had horror stories this year of uh, you know people, landlords increasing rents, landlords um, changing the whole scheme for what people expect, and, and significant increases in their rent. And that's where a long term mortgage allows you to at least know what the principal interest is going to be over time. Interesting stories out there. Uh, we know the rural areas are getting a little of attention, but uh, I seem to remember that you get some calls when we start talking about either the senior citizens or the first-time home buyers. It, are there yes. programs out there? Absolutely, yeah. No, we're really shifting our focus to that product. Um, you know, the HECM for purchase and then the, the HECM refinance, it's, it's also known as reverse mortgage. There's a ton of equity out there for seniors, and in these uncertain times, uh, it's a good way to, to hedge, to know where, you know, to, to unleash some of that cash, some of that equity in your home. You don't have to take it out, but why not set up the line so that it's there for you in case you need it? So we're really trying to get that message out. It is not a bad thing uh, to be able to leverage that for the future. So that's our focus right now, and, and it's paying off. For both of you, where are we going in the last six months of this year? What would you say? Um, I think if we're talking about uh, seeing another increase in interest rates, it kind of puts people on their heels just a little bit until they get used to it. Uh, but I also know that you know, in certain price points, they're still moving really fast. I mean, anything that's like uh, 400 or less, uh, still things are happening really fast. That doesn't mean that the higher price points aren't still moving. It's just that we're starting to see the inventories build a little bit. And again, back to the point of going back to a traditional market or having a little more inventory, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I just think that uh, moving forward, we're going to be watching it pretty closely on a month-by-month basis, but I think we're still going to be busy, and we've we've been busy up till this point. Yeah, we still have inventory problems in Sioux Falls, but there's not enough houses for people to buy. And uh, don't wait. That's the biggest message I would say to people is, you know, I say that maybe in the future, again, during a recessionary time frame, mortgage interest rates, long-term mortgage rates typically go down by about, say, a point and a half. But why would you want to wait to jump in a year from now thinking that maybe the rates might be lower? Guess what's going to happen? It's going to be like a frenzy again. Everybody else is going to be jumping in trying to buy a house. Get it now, and then we'll take care of it. You know, I guess the mortgage that you pick right now, we're trying to stress don't pay a lot for that mortgage because we know down the road we have a very good chance of refinancing you. So let's save our money for that mortgage. You know, That's the long-term one. This is the one to get you into the home. Next year is maybe the one that, you know, once you've got the house, which is really the hardest thing to get, yep. is the house. And so get that now. We uh, talked a little bit uh, earlier. You took a call from, was it Washington State? Mm-hmm. Yes. Would you advise them to use a local banker here particularly? <laughs> and and it's, it's strange that we That's say that, it, and it may be self-serving, but yeah. Yeah. with the fact you got multiple bids, yep. aren't the people that are looking at those bids going to be more uh, – concerned that if they have money that's coming from out of town it's a little different than as if it's going through uh dave kelly's that is yeah that is one of our buyer consultations that we have is that you know we appreciate the fact that they're they're qualified but if it's not with a local lender maybe we have them get qualified with a local lender uh, also and then from there they can make a decision on how they want to act and because uh we do say that a lot of times if there's multiple offers and they're looking at this and let's just say that both offers are just about exactly the same, except one's a local lender and one is is not. Um, 
it gives a little bit extra weight to the one that has the local lender. So I'm not saying they have to do that. I'm just saying that we make a recommendation that they at least look into it and uh, and we go from there. So because they get to use whoever they want, but we do make that recommendation. Well, and sometimes it seems like people, um, you know, they'll be they'll, they'll take your advice, but they won't heed it. Right. They won't do it. And so what they end up doing is maybe after their fourth or fifth offer is not accepted, then all of a sudden here they come and go, yeah, I've been trying and it hasn't been working too well. You know, because there's a lot more that people realize. I mean, I think it's important to try to not only approve that borrower for to make sure their offer stands out, but then to take the time to, you know, work with the listing agent, make sure they know how strong the borrower is. I mean, there's extra steps that are there that if you're maybe an online lender in a call center, you just don't have the, the resources to make that happen. You know, we have talked, you've been in real estate how many years? Since 2008. Okay, and mine was 2002, but we always talked about having good credit. My guess is if you're in a multi-bid situation, you better darn well have good credit. You better see a guy like Dave Kelly. Well, I think it's, you know, conventional offers. Typically, those are higher credit. Uh, again, there's less less things for the, the seller to worry about or the listing agent to worry about. But, you know, i got to be honest with you, the credit that we're seeing um, and I think the averages that we're seeing for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are getting into the mid-700s. It's almost gone to the point where, and that's why I don't think we're seeing the foreclosures that happened like in 2008 during that time frame because people's credit has gotten a lot better. Their equity has improved, and you're not going to see that again. Even yeah. if we do hit a downturn, okay. it's that's not going to happen. Housing's not going to help contribute to that. It's going to actually go up during that time. And frame. they changed some of the lending standards also, so it, it's required them to have that better, or they're required to get a few things done before they actually can qualify for the loan because uh, usually people are fairly close. And it may take a month. It may take a couple, three months. But uh, we've had clients that after six months of working on their credit, they finally get to a point where they can move forward. So. I was surprised uh, that in our first segment this morning, talking with uh, last year's president of the South Dakota Home Builders Association, along with Ron Nelson, commercial real estate, how much that people are now looking at Brandon, Harrisburg, Hartfords, and Tees for properties. It's not too far to drive. No, no, it's those uh, the properties uh, in some of those communities are as much, if not more, than in Sioux Falls. But they like the idea of being in a smaller community. They like the idea of being close to Sioux Falls. And now, you know, close now becomes a relative term because it used to be, hey, I want to be within 10 to, you know, miles of Sioux Falls. Now, I mean, we're having the conversation. As long as I'm within, you know, 30 or 40 miles of Sioux Falls, and that's literally, I mean, just about everybody I talk to is like they're okay with being that far away. Even with gas prices, it's just that they know that if they're going to buy and they're going to get into a smaller community or try and buy a lesser of a home, lesser priced home, they're going to have to go out, you know, that far to you know be able to accomplish that i had a guy from california last year that did not mind an hour and a half commute okay because they were from the bay area and for them there was that's normal so you know you traffic's a lot faster too well yeah and you know 80 miles an hour is way different than maybe five miles an hour but you end up driving a lot further during so did he find a home in pukwana or what did he uh no it was here on south dakota (laughs) wow (laughs) dave kelly a little bit of a shock Dave Kelly, Fairway uh, Mortgage, Tony Bachman, Keynoter, Report Card Show, his own company, Coldwell Banker. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill.